Hello everybody. So today I wanted to show you how you could have your Windows 11 computer automatically log in for you. That way you don't have to have your username, password, or domain. It'll just automatically log in. And I wanted to show you three different ways that you could do it. So the first way is you can do it with just a small registry change and then you could have Windows remember the username and the password. And then the second way, you can go into the registry and you can add all the information to the registry and it'll automatically log in for you. And then the third way is you can use a separate program and you can put that information into the program and it will save all that information to the registry encrypted for you. So I'm gonna show you all three ways and that way you can pick the one that'll work best for you. So let's go over to the Windows 11 computer now, and I'll show you all three of them. Okay, so the first way we're going to do it is by checking a program that's built into Windows. And you may not have this option if you're running Windows Home Edition, but you should have it if you're running Windows Pro, Educational, Enterprise, any of those versions, you absolutely will have this. You may not have it if you have the home version but you're going to click on the start button and you're going to type in net PL whiz. And then you're going to click on this, but you want to run it as an administrator. So if you get a prompt that asks if you want to allow it to make changes, you can click yes, but it did not give me that prompt. Now here, it's not giving me the option to uncheck that it requires Control Alt and Delete. So we need to make one registry change. So I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel to close out of this. And then we're going to go back down to the Start button. And then we're going to type in Reg Edit, which is short for Registry Editor. And then we're going to run it as Administrator. And then if it wants to allow you to make changes, go ahead and click Yes. Now, inside of the registry editor, we want to go to H key local machine, and then we want to go to software, and you can open up each one of these either by double clicking on it or clicking the arrow beside it. And so I'm going to go into software, and then I'm going to go to Microsoft, and then I'm going to scroll down towards the bottom because I'm wanting to go into Windows NT, which is right here. And then I'm gonna go into current version. And then under current version, I wanna go down to password list, which is right here. And then I wanna click on device. Now over here, if you'll notice, there is a device password list build version, and it's currently set to two. Well, that is the reason that we are not able to see the option where we can uncheck control alt delete. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on this and we're going to change that two to a zero. And then we're going to click OK. And then I'm going to close the registry editor. Now, it may require that you restart your Windows 11 computer, but sometimes it does not. So here, I'm going to go ahead and click on the start button again and type in net PL whiz. And then I'm going to go ahead and open it, but I'm going to run as administrator again. Now, as you'll notice, I can uncheck Users must enter a username and password to use this computer. And if I uncheck it and I click apply, now it wants to know the username and the password for the computer. So if I go ahead and I enter that password and I confirm the password and then I click OK, now I can click OK again and it saved that information. So if I click on the start button and I tell it to restart and we'll give it a few seconds to restart, 
when it comes back up, it's going to log in automatically and I won't have to enter a password. So let's give that just a second. Okay, so as you can see, the Windows 11 computer booted up and it didn't ask me for the password at all. So that's exactly what we were trying to accomplish. But what if you didn't want to go through those steps? What if you wanted to do everything in the registry yourself? Okay, well let me go over to the computer and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Okay. So on the second way that you can do it is you can click on the start button and we're going to open up the registry editor. So you will type in reg edit and then you want to run registry editor as administrator. So click on run as administrator. And then if it asks you, is it okay to allow this app to make changes? You want to click on yes. Now, when registry editor opens, we want to go to the H key local machine. And again, the same thing, you can either double click on the folder or you can click the little arrow to expand that key. And then we're going to go down to software. And then we're going to go to Microsoft. And then we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom and we're going to go to Windows NT right here and then we're going to go to current version and then I'm going to go down towards the bottom again and I'm going to click on win logon now in the win logon key we might need to create some string values okay because the first and most important one well they're all important <laughs> but the one that you have to have in order to be able to turn it on in the first place is called auto admin logon and we don't currently have that one so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go up here to the top and click on edit and i'm going to click new and i'm going to click string value then it wants to know the name so i'm going to name it auto admin logon and it has to be just like that with the capital a capital a and capital l and then I'm going to press enter. Now, if you'll notice, nothing is in it at the moment. So I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to enter a one. Now I'm going to click OK. Now that's the first step, but we have at least two more steps. We need to create two more string values. So I'm going to click on edit again, new string value. And here we're going to name it default user name. Now, if you happen to have this one already, don't go and create it. But I did not have it in my list, so I needed to create it. And now I'm going to press enter. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on default username. And I'm going to put my username in. And then I'm going to click OK. Now, the last one that I need to create, and this is if you're not connected to a domain, is the default password. So I'm going to click on Edit, New, String Value, and I'm going to call this one Default Password. And then again, I'm going to press Enter, and now I'm going to double-click on it, and I'm going to put my password in. Now, if you'll notice, when I typed it, you can actually see what your password is. And you would be able to see your password when you type it in also. So, if you don't want to go through this option, that's fine. But you can see that it's adding each one of your pieces of information. Your username, your password, and it's automatically going to log you on. And then you would click OK. Now, you do have one more step if you're connected to a domain and you would need to create one more string value. So you would click on edit, new, 
string value. And you would call this one default domain name and press enter. And then you would go and double click on it and put in whatever the domain is. So mydomain.com. And then that would save that information for you as well. And it would log on, but I don't have a domain. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. And you can see that it does show up, but I don't need a domain. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that string value since I don't need it. And then that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Now here it's got all the information that I need in order for it to log me into the computer. So I'm going to go ahead and close the registry editor and I'm going to click on the start button and I'm going to click on the power icon and tell it to restart. Now I'm going to give it just a few moments and when it comes back up it should automatically log into Windows. So we'll give it just a few moments. Okay, so if you'll notice, it automatically logged me into the computer, and I didn't have to put anything in. It did everything for me just by entering those three string values in the Windows Registry Editor. So that was fantastic. But I still have a third way that I want to show you, and that third way is to use another app to do it. So let's go back over to the computer, and I want to show you that third way. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to go on to the internet and I'm going to use Microsoft Edge since it's included with Windows 11 and I happen to have mine down here on the taskbar. But if you don't have yours down there, you can click on Start and it'll either show up right here under the pinned apps or you can click on All Apps and you can scroll down and it'll show up right here under the M's for Microsoft Edge. And then go ahead and open it. Now once it opens up, you can use any search engine that you want to. Bing, Yahoo, Google. I'm going to use DuckDuckGo. So up here at the top, I'm going to type in DuckDuckGo.com and press enter. And then I'm going to search for Sys internals space auto log on and then I'm going to press enter now here I'm going to choose this very first result and we're going to click on download auto log on now this is not a very big file so it won't take but just a few seconds to download and once it does, I like to click on this little folder right here because it opens up the downloads folder. Now, for some reason, you don't have that little icon right there. You can always go down to the bottom on the taskbar and click on File Explorer. And once it opens up, you can click on Downloads on the left side. And then there is the file that we just downloaded. Now it's a zip file because it says compressed zip. So what we want to do is right click on it. And then we want to extract all. And it's going to put it in your downloads folder in another folder called auto logon. And so we're going to go ahead and click on extract. Now it includes three files in this folder. Now the very first one is just called auto log on. Now this one will work on your system even if it's a 64-bit system. But I prefer to use the auto log on 64 because it was built for 64-bit. It was really the x64 version. This one is the x86 version. But both will work. I just prefer the 64-bit. And if you're wondering about this 64A, that one is just the ARM version. So if you have one of the brand new processors that have come out from Qualcomm 
or maybe you happen to get Windows running on your Apple computer, you could run that and it would automatically log you on. But I'm going to go ahead and stick with this auto log on 64. And so I'm just going to go ahead and double click on it. And then it'll want to know if you can make changes. So click yes. And then you have to agree to their interim user license agreement. And so I'm going to click agree. And then it wants to know the username, the domain, and the password. So I'm not going to change anything, but I am going to put my password in. And then you can click enable. And if you ever want to turn it back off again, you can click disable and it'll automatically turn it back off for you. But I'm going to go ahead and click enable and then it put it into the registry for you encrypted. So you couldn't see that password. Now you could go and you could copy it and you could decrypt it yourself or another administrator could go and decrypt it also. But you would not just be able to pull it up and read it without decrypting it first. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now I'm going to close all the windows that I have open, including the Microsoft Edge. And I'm going to go ahead and restart the computer. And if you happen to be wondering, are you really making these changes so that it's testing it out for each one of the options? I did. I went back and I reset it back to the way it was so that you could see that each option did work and it would log on the computer so that you wouldn't have any problems with any of the three options. They'll all work on your computer. But if you do have a problem, please let me know. And so we're going to give that just a few more seconds to finish booting up and I'm going to make sure it logs on and then we'll be good to go. Okay, so as you can see, it did log on to the Windows 11 computer by using the Sys Internals Auto Logon program. So that worked fantastic for what we needed. So I hope that was helpful on how can I get my Windows 11 computer to automatically log on without having to enter my username, password, or even domain. If you do happen to have any questions about this, please let me know down below in the comments and I will do my best to get back to you about that. And if there's a video that you would like for me to create for you, please let me know that down below in the comments as well. And I will do my best to create that video for you. And as always, because you all do such a great job, if you can hit that like and subscribe button so I can keep putting up more great content like how do I get my Windows 11 computer to automatically log on without having to enter a username, a password, or a domain. And I'll be glad to keep putting up all this great content for you all. Thanks so much, everybody. I really appreciate you all. I hope you have a great day. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.